All right, it's time for the Under Center Podcast. We're going to talk a little bit about Caleb Williams and his, his top 30 visit with the Bears. Go over some of the rest of the visits the Bears have had so far. I believe they're at 19. Our Bears insider Josh Schrock told me that. And then later on the show, we're going to rank wide receiver duos in the NFL now that the Bears have one of the better duos, bringing in Keaton Allen, of course, bringing in DJ Moore last offseason when they dealt away the first pick in the draft to the Carolina Panthers. I got Alex Shapiro. I got my guy Josh Schrock. We got Tony Gear running the show. Of course, this is presented by St. Xavier University, and we're broadcasting virtually from the NBC Podcast Studios. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well. I was I was doing really well until while we were waiting to do this, um, <laughs> two, two, two great colleagues of ours, Chuck Garfine and, of course, our, our guy Gruff, are doing a, a great podcast for the for the White Sox, and we, we could hear it, and we just know it's a lot of stuff going on with the White Sox. If you're a White Sox fan, you don't want to hear it. So hey man, at least I got to talk about the eclipse today. Yeah, there's a there's a are little you, news hit for the White Sox today. Eclipse, they moved back their first pitch an hour. Isn't that cool? Isn't that neat? They're in total. Are you are you guys going to step out and do you have eclipse glasses to step out to watch look at the no eclipse? no and no. What? What do you mean you're not going to step out and look at this celestial thing that's not going to happen for another twenty years? God, I'll catch it next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it didn't get on, it didn't get it didn't get on the book. Fifty-year-old shock yeah. oh, yeah. is right. down, but what? But thirty-year-old shock ain't. I'm very busy at fifty. I better not be this busy. So at four fifty, minutes. I better be. Josh, uh, it's four I, minutes I, of time. I I got a lot of things going on. You don't know. I mean, four, four minutes. You can, minutes. Bet. you can for what? What? It's a little dot in the sky. Pass another dot in the sky. Oh, that's cool. Okay, cool. Hey, Alex, you send me a send me a picture. Don't look at it. Just send me a picture. You text me. I'll be the like Earth. That the sun and the moon are going to be aligned. I don't know what's okay. going to happen. I'm going to take a look. It's going to be wild. I'm going to see if I derive some celestial you, you, you know, solar you know powers. Gonna I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Nothing. It's going to get dark. dark. It's go, it's, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. It's going to get it's dark. Gonna not be dark. Yeah, it's going to go dark. And it's going to not be dark. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. So Shrock and I are on opposite ends of the spectrum. I'm going up there. I got my solar glasses. Got them from the library. Thank you, Chicago Pub- yeah. Public Library. I'm the, going the right up there with my calendar so I can look at the little halos on the ground. I'm wearing my red shirt so I can see my red shirt turn gray. I'm hype, man. Outer space is cool. All right. Back to the Bears. <laughs> uh, is, is there anything else, gentlemen, that we can surmise from this Caleb visit? It seems, of course, it's, a, it's been a foregone conclusion. All right. The Bears weren't moving off of Justin Fields just for anybody. The Bears did not go and talk to any of the top quarterbacks that are in the top of the draft when we're talking about Drake, man, of course, Jaden Daniels. It's a foregone conclusion. Caleb Williams will be the Bears quarterback moving forward. Hopefully he will be successful. Anything else to to, to kick out to either one of you about his top 30 visit coming to Chicago and coming to Hallis Hall? No, I mean, I think the only thing that probably sticks out right is the is the dinner with with veteran players, with DJ Moore, with Tyreek Stevenson and, and guys like that. That's not a normal thing on the top 30 visit. You know, they're not having Dallas Turner do that. They're not having uh, Dylan Lopp do that, right? That's a Caleb Williams, hey, meet your future teammates kind of deal. Let's see how you interact with the guy you're throwing the football to. How do you interact with young defensive players? Um, yeah, this was pretty much a conclusion after the combine, right? After the 15-minute meeting, they were like, okay, we, we really like this guy. Like, they traded fields before the pro day, right? So they – these boxes have been checked, and as long as he showed up to Hallis Hall and the medicals were what we all believe them to be because they have the medicals basically right. They've logged every injury he's ever had, so unless he's been hiding some sort of degenerative knee condition that no one knew about, uh, this was a conclusion. It's over. He'll be the number one pick, and we can focus on number nine because it's it's been a wrap for a while. Yeah, the only thing I'll add is that this is the last official point of contact, right? Uh, so this – I mean, the evaluation had been concluded, but this officially concludes the Bears' evaluation of Caleb Williams. Um, They had been focused on nine, but now it's like we can truly set that aside because the Bears won't, right? They won't have any more points of contact with Caleb Williams before the draft now. No, no points of contact. And then as Ken, as you noted, uh, kind of important, there was no points of contact with the other quarterbacks, right? No top 30 visits. Uh, no meetings at the pro days. I mean, Brian Bulls didn't even go to Carolina. Uh, so we we know where this is at. Oh, and, and the same could be said for Caleb Williams. He's not going anywhere else, right? Right. Caleb Correct. Williams yeah. isn't going on any right. other top 30 visits. He had one top 30 visit. It was the Chicago Bears. Right. It's done. It's, yeah. it's a wrap. Right. 
You guys, when you're mentioning points of contact, are you referring to contacting with the Bears in general to the draft? Because that wouldn't be. So, they, I mean, they're not going to have any discussion with the team and player before the no, draft in terms, whatsoever? In terms of in-person meeting. Something okay, like that. just making sure. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Right, like but, when they meet at so the Combine, there... when they meet at Hellas Hall, when, you know, when they meet at the Pro Day, like those face-to-face -face points of contact. Sorry. Question. Because he's the first pick, are they allowed to have more points of contact meetings because they can they have the first pick? I know they can't the league doesn't want them to do anything as far as signing a player prior to the draft to make it a fate yeah. complete, but still, like he's there. So why can't they compared to the rest of the teams in the league that have to wait till the Bears make a decision? Yeah, it's a good question. Um I, I just think it's probably frowned upon. Like, I think in terms of like a lot of contact, they probably have to sign him to a contract. And the league's probably going to frown upon that, as, as you mm -hmm. noted, they kind of want, they want the fake drama, right? Everyone knows it's going to happen, but it'd be, you know, kind of ding the TV product if you don't, if you don't need to tune in for the first pick, I guess. Um, look, they're, I mean, they're going to talk to him, right? They're not going to get dinged if Shane Waldron shooting him some texts. Um, so there'll be some, there'll be some contact, I imagine, kind of under the radar, but uh, nothing, nothing so out in the open. Top 30 visits. How many are we up to, Josh? I believe you said nine prior to starting the show. Do we know who's coming in and who are we waiting on to come in? And we had 19 so far, 19 to the 30. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. is coming in today along with Latu Latu and Xavier Worthy. Um, Malik Neighbors will be here on Wednesday. Uh, Roma Dunze's already been here. Dallas Turner, Tyler Guyton. Um, you know, they got a couple other later round guys coming in. You'd expect uh, guys like Jared Verse and Talese Fuaga to probably get get uh, visits eventually, right? Kind of those guys in the number nine range. Joe Alt uh, will probably get a local visit, which does not count as a top 30 visit since he goes to Notre Dame. So it's kind of a separate thing, but I imagine he'll get one of those as well. So like, you know, like you mentioned, they're, they're obviously focused on guys at nine and then trade down potential, right? Um, so th those are those are kind of the big names. I don't think, let me look at my sheet here. Uh, Graham Barton. Uh, Zach Frazier, offensive lineman, who are kind of in that late first round, early second round. So they're they're kind of looking at every avenue, right? They're bringing in the guys who will be there at nine, who will be there in the middle of the first round, and then later in the first round if it's a if it's a big trade back. I had a question, Josh. Hmm. Being around the league, have you seen people yeah. use their top thirty picks, particularly when you think about it? You know, a lot of times people only have one first round pick, maybe one second mm -hmm. round pick. How far yeah. into the later rounds do people take advantage of using their top 30 picks? Um, it, it really just depends on what your what your draft allotment looks like. Um, so like for the Bears right now, uh, you know, they're they're supposed to have a top 30 visit with the Yale offensive lineman. I'm not gonna say his name because I will absolutely butcher that and that is disrespectful to that young man, but look him up. Uh, he's probably a third or fourth round guy. I think they've got a like a two lane DB who's probably in the in the four or five range. So um, a lot of it is not, you know, once you get past the first round guys, it's not even like where they're slotted to be drafted, but it's a lot of guys like you just haven't had a lot of points of contact with, right? Maybe you didn't have meeting at the combine or maybe they weren't even at the combine. Maybe you couldn't make it to the two lane pro day. So it's like, oh, we got 30 of these. We, we like the measurables. We like the tape. Let's, let's bring them in here and meet with them. So a lot of, a lot of factors go into that. Um, so, I mean, normally you're not burning a lot of top 30 visits on, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round guys, but you'll, 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 use a couple just in case there there are some guys you want to get uh you know kind of more more points of contact with alex any of the names that josh mentioned stand out to you as far as the guys that the bears have brought in or going to bring in that perhaps you didn't think they were interested in probably layatu latu you know um he's a guy who you talk about the tape you talk about the measurables and the production it's dynamite and if there's not the medical history you're looking at a slam dunk pass rusher that is probably going high. The medicals are an issue, though. Um, so this will give them a chance to really talk it out, to go over those medicals and say, OK, is this a guy that we are comfortable taking? Is this a guy we're comfortable, you know, maybe moving back and keeping on our board? Or is he going to be on our do not draft list because of the medical concerns? So that's. That's something that stu stuck out to me. They are going to do their due diligence on him because, again, medicals aside, he is a dynamite pass rushing prospect. It's just the the neck injury that he says is behind him uh, will obviously scare teams because that is uh, that, that's serious stuff. Jo God, Josh, were you about to say something? No. Let me ask you this, both of you. Starting off with you, Josh. 
is there a period of trading back if the Bears do move off of the ninth pick, as we've mentioned, that they brought in players that you would view that they would be drafting in the teens or 20s? Is there a point of contention when you view, okay, I think that's moving back a little bit too far when you could have, and I know we've talked about blue chip players. I don't even want to attach blue chip to it, but just let's say a premium player. So that can go perhaps into the teens. So is there a point of contention for both of you where you're like, you know what, I think they didn't have to go that far back and they probably could have stayed at this point and drafted a player rather than trying to recoup too many assets and getting too many B-quality players? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think a lot of it's going to depend on what the return for the trade back is, right? Like I could probably sit here right now and say like, I mean, you know me, Ken, I don't even want them to move off a nine. Like I think they need to stop with this. Let's get two or three B players, just get a freaking A player and let's let's play some good football. Um, and I could sit here and say like, I wouldn't move past 18, but then, you know, what if they trade to whatever, 23 and they get a second and a third or a second and a future third. And then someone falls to them and it's like, Oh, that was actually a pretty good trade. So like, I'd have to see the return and, and the players available. Like if I were just talk about it blankly, like I wouldn't trade past 15. Cause I think if you get past 15, maybe 16, you're probably not getting one of the top three edge rushers. And I imagine if you're trading out of nine, that means you're going for an edge rusher and not a receiver, unless all three are gone before nine. Cause we're expecting one of, well, one of neighbors or Dunze, I'm not going to say Marvin. I know they're meeting with him today, but that would be if Marvin's available at nine, I might have a stroke. So you got to uh, imagine they're meeting with Marvin to see if they trade up for Marvin. Harris. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or right. Marvin That's Harrison right. is like, why the hell am I here? How dare you? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. He, sh he showed up and he's like, y'all drafting. Oh, you take me at one. No, no, no. no nine. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the old Dion reference as far as where, where, <laughs> where do y'all select it? Oh no, I won't even nah, be there at nah. that time. I'll have yeah. to take this. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Like I, I mean, just I just it's funny that Alex says that because that's what I was thinking when you said it, Josh. I'm like, well, clearly they're gonna have to move up because if if I'm Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm like, so now I'm the third best receiver in this bad boy, basically. Like, so I mean, that's well, what, you know, that's go, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. I mean, that trade up is pretty simple, right? It's quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Vikings move up, take McCarthy at four, and the Bears swap with the Chargers at five. Hypothetical. Woo! Not not inconceivable. Yeah. What if the Chargers go with Joel? Not happening. Yeah, that's true. They yeah, just maybe, got rid of maybe. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Probably not happening. Right, and they and they and they do have a left tackle. <laughs> right, and they do have a left tackle. Yeah. What? What? Josh, you kind of said this already, Alex. What would happen in, in your mind if Marva Harrison Jr. slipped all the way to nine? I would have questions. Mm. My alarm bells <laughs> would be dinging. Th that's what would be happening for me because something is seemingly off. Something is wrong uh, because this is a guy who has spent uh, all of this season and parts of last season as well being kind of like the consensus number one guy. This is a guy who – before Caleb, Caleb Williams hysteria really took over, some people were talking about, like, is he actually the most talented player in this draft? Um, everything he, – he is as blue chip of a blue chip player as, as you can find, in my opinion. The tape is incredible. He can beat defenders in so many ways. The production is incredible and consistent over the past two seasons. And he's got the work ethic and all the characteristics. Like, all of that, by all accounts, is sterling. And he's got the NFL pedigree. With his father, obviously, Marvin Harrison Sr. Uh, so if he falls at nine, again, my I, I'm saying what's wrong? Why is this happening? Something's not right here. Um, that, that will be my number one question. All right, before we get into wide receiver duos, ESPN's Kirk Herbstreet said the Bears perhaps could be the Lions moving forward when you look at what the jump the Lions did prior to last season and how they made it into the playoffs and could have honestly had a chance to make it all the way to the Super Bowl. Josh, your thoughts on Kirk Herbstreit saying that about the Bears moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense, right? I think when the Bears kind of went on their little run at the end of last season, we kind of likened it to the, the 2022 Lions, right, who started – one and eight and then and then turned it around and almost made the playoffs. And we're like, hey, look, it's kind of a it's a nice little run to give you give you momentum heading into 2023. A lot of things are are repeatable about that stretch, right? It didn't really feel fluky, especially defensively. Offensively, it was obviously hit and miss. That's why they're making a quarterback change. But I think when you factor in the Caleb Williams arrival and the expected arrival of another blue chip player, whether it be Adunze, Dallas Turner, whoever, Joe Alt, um, there's no reason to think 
and I've said this for weeks now, there's no reason to think the Bears cannot go 10 and 7 next year and compete for the division, given given everything they have. Um, a year ago, they had one blue chip player in DJ Moore and a guy in Jalen Johnson who were like, hey, he could be a blue chip player. Maybe he's a red, maybe he's a red, right? Maybe he's a B. And he's clearly a blue chip guy now. So, and they only get Montez Sweat, they get Keenan Allen. Uh, they've been hitting on these draft picks, right? I think Kyler Gordon is special, and I think we're going to see probably even better from Kyler Gordon in year three. Um, yeah, I think as long as Caleb Williams is is good, not even great. If he is good uh, and Shane Waldron is good, the Bears should win 10 games. I feel like you're setting us up with that 10 games. I feel like you're, I feel like there's a narrative you're setting up that you, it's a oh. bit you're going to ride all season long with. Well, this you know, I, I'm a writer. I love narratives. What's the narrative? Tell me the narrative. <laughs> I feel like, I think it's, I need, it's I need to get in on this. I need to get in on this narrative. I don't know about this narrative, but I, I'll it's think a about drop. it. That's a good, it's a yeah, drop. Yeah. I'm going to do a little role reversal where I'm going to be the tampering the good vibes a little bit for this conversation. And I think the, Number one difference, and I agree, like if, if Caleb Williams is solid, the Bears will be good. But there is a big difference in this comparison between the Detroit Lions take, of last year and the Bears of next year. You're about to take what I was going to do. Let's is see it? Do. Yeah, let's see. It's, go, it's go. like Caleb Williams is going to be a rookie quarterback. Oh, no, it wasn't where I was going. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, interesting. Ken's going coaching. Ken's going coaching. No, I'm not. Keep going. Okay. Um, when we talk about Caleb Williams and his – future as a Chicago bear. It's like projecting over a, a long, a long-term situation. Uh, and we have said so many times that, Hey, Caleb Williams could be entering the best position. A number one overall drafted quarterback has ever entered. And that might make things better, but historically speaking, first number one, overall pick quarterbacks struggle, rookie quarterbacks struggle in the NFL. Instant success is hard to come by. Right. So that should temper. Hey, Bears are not going to be Super Bowl favorites after adding Caleb Williams, even though the defense looks so much better, even though they've added these weapons on offense, even though, even though, right? The situation is phenomenal, but that doesn't mean that they're ready to, again, compete for a deep postseason run in 2024 because rookie quarterback learning a new offense. At, like everything. It's not just him learning a new offense, right? Shane Waldron is teaching all these guys a different offense. Um, except for Gerald Everett, who already knows the offense a little bit. Um, Jared Goff, on the other hand, came to Detroit as a veteran, as a guy who had already led a team to a Super Bowl. And I know that Todd Gurley was really the guy who made that Rams offense work, but he had been there. He had gone through the motions. He wasn't new to the NFL by any stretch of the imagination. And the Lions had that continuity of not only Jared Goff, the veteran, but Jared Goff, year one with the Lions, and Ben Johnson too. Jared Goff, year two in that same system that allowed them all to take that same step so that when they added pieces, when they added Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown taking that next step forward with all those weapons in that year two. There's just a lot more continuity. There's a lot more veteran stuff in place for them to take that next step. And I think Caleb Williams and Shane Waldron, rookie quarterback, new offensive coordinator, is a bit of a wild card where it's like, yeah, 10 and 7 is probably on the table, but let's maybe pump the brakes on Bears Super Bowl run, you know, uh, 40 years after the last Super Bowl. No, yeah. No, no, no one should be saying Super Bowl until they make the playoffs and win a playoff game, and then we can talk Super Bowl next year. All right, my point. I think we're real good encapsulating everything right there, Alex, and bringing in Josh's point as far as coaching. As you know, we're a Ben Johnson positive podcast, if you know anything. Um, for me, and I think actually we're all giving good reasons to pump the brakes. It's not saying the Bears may not have a winning schedule, a winning record next year they they're they're talented enough if Caleb plays well enough and if Waldron's offense transfers quickly I'll say this though and I think that we've left this part out offensive line like you had one of the best offensive lines in the NFL protecting Jared Goff the last couple of years we don't have the best offensive line and, and look on the flip side you don't have a great defensive line like one thing you can say you could sit there and then add to that you could say the Bears have uh or the Lions let me flip this and pay proper due respect 
if the Lions have a Montez Sweat-esque player in Aiden Hutchinson, and we know how crazy Aiden Hutchinson went off last year, um, the young player out of Michigan in his second year in the league. But that's it, and that's what the Bears have. Okay, that's one. But when you look up and down, and look, another thing that we've said all along here, guess what came for the Lions offensive lines? Injuries. And we saw how that hit them, and we've talked about depth here, but I don't think any one of us would say that – that the line, the Lions' offensive line that they had healthy at the beginning of last year and the season be- before, that the Bears can match up against that, and I think that's a great benefit to a quarterback that's learning and has learned the system and found uh, become comfortable in the system as Jared Goff has and Ben Johnson's system to know that he doesn't have to necessarily worry about his protection his protection as often. So that for me is one of the reasons that I'll point out, and it's not a knock; they can improve, and I'm, it's kind of the reason I'm bringing it up as far as with the ninth pick, they can improve what they do by, for instance, if with the local player, because he went to Indy, bringing in a Joe Alt. And now we start talking about, you know, having something on par when you got, you know, right, right there, Darnell, right. Then you got, now we can talk about being something similar to the Lions. <laughs> Josh Rock, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, here I am just being like, hey, the bear, I, hey, I'm impressed with what they've done. It's a good roster. They should be pretty good. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm getting burned at the stake. I didn't say no. they were going to go to the Super Bowl. I said, hey, they no. should they should expect to win 10 games. The playoffs should be the expectation. It I think be. it was your good vibes threw us off kilter. We're like, whoa. Yeah, whoa. we didn't know what was going <laughs> on here. Got, so got, somebody setting got, us up, got, man. They set they us got, up, they Alex. They set us up. They got, they, got, they got a last place schedule. They upgraded at quarterback. They upgraded at OC. They added Keenan Allen. They should add another blue chip player. If Caleb Williams is whatever we think he's going to be, even as a rookie, like if he throws for 3,700 yards and the defense is good, they should win nine, 10 games. They should. They, nine, I think nine games for me, they go over nine games and going to be ecstatic. I, I, I'm yeah. still, if, if he has no like real dip from a rookie quarterback, that'll be something. You know, like right. that, th- no, that'll no, be no, something. No, 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 no. The, yeah, yeah, it's not, so, it's not going to be like this. I mean, even right. CJ Stroud had duds. I mean, they lost to the Panthers like 13 to 10. It happens. Hey, we, yeah, it did. We was worried about that. Um, <laughs> look, I, again, I, I got one more I thought about, and I didn't tell you guys prior to the show. So this is on me being a bad host. Um, I'm no, going to question. I like this. I like this. Better. Yeah, pop, like quiz. This better. pop quiz is fun. I like this better. Pop I, quiz I, right. I, I think we kind of did this for anybody that did. Josh last year came up with something that was pretty smart. Where we do a March Madness bracket from the Sweet 16 to the championship game in Victor as far as in the draft. I look, last year, next year may be the last year that this is going to be a sexy now that the Bears are getting better if you really care <laughs> what the Bears do in the first round. But the reason I bring this up is that we kind of talk about where I'm going, but I don't think we've really sat on it. If there was a player with the Bears selected and we're at the draft right now, Alex will be at Al Hallis Hall, Josh will be at the draft, you guys being right there and you hear – my, 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 at number nine, and it is someone that you like. I didn't want them to select that player. Who is that said player? I'm gonna be honest. Like, I am I like that player? Like, I'm just shocked. Like, I can't believe they did this. Yeah, like that's not my. Like, for instance, I I know you got players, Josh. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah I, got, this, I got. This isn't a I knock. Also, let me say this: this isn't a knock. Where it's it's pro- it's pro- it's it's probably for me. It's probably Fuaga. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because of the right tackle only thing, and that either leads to them making him play left tackle or switching Darnell to the left side, which would kind of fly in the face of what Darnell's good at. So it's not even like a knock on Fuaga's ability. Right. I think he's an incredible tackle, but I would just be like, man, that's like what? What? <laughs> what? Why? Yeah. Why would you like? Why wouldn't you just take a left tackle if you needed a tackle so bad? Yeah, th- that's kind of where my head's at. Like similarly, if they took Quinian Mitchell or like one of the cornerbacks. If they, no, if they, a, take a, if they take a cornerback, I'll walk out the draft. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's, not gonna that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But if it was something like that, right? that's where it's like, huh? What? I, I know you guys maybe are doing like, in cornerbacks, but you don't have to do it all the time. Like at nine, like maybe it's a massive, like it probably, it's either like Fuaga or maybe it's a, like a big reach, like for a guy like, but like Chop Robinson, like they're just like, boom, I, we're taking Chop at nine. I, he's about to do- well, that's just, I'm just going through guys I'm they've met you. with at the I top thirty. Like I would just be like, "Oh, what? Like, Whoa. why?" Yeah, or Z- Xavier, Xavier, Xavier Worthy, same thing today. He'd meet right. with them at nine. It's like, what? Why? Why? No. I think the that. inverse is there are more correct, quote unquote, correct answers. There are more picks that make sense and make this team like visibly and understandably better 
than yeah. the inverse of that, than the opposite. There's there's more mm. picks where it's like, oh yeah, I, I understand why they made that pick versus options where it's, where you would go, I don't understand that pick. Like honestly, even if like even if they took Brock Bowers, which would be like, oh, that's kind of weird. I'd be like, that's yeah. kind of cool. Like that's interesting. Like I'm I feel it. Let's go. I guess I think mm. Brock Bowers is awesome. I think okay, you hit on a player for me. It's about value, I think. And this is my yeah. value. So this is an opinion. I'm on the outside looking in. So don't pay attention to my value. I think Brock Bowers and perhaps, and I'm just talking about at nine. If they move to 10 right. to 13, I'm all for the players I'm about to say. I think Bowers and yeah. perhaps Jared Verse mm -hmm. may be. And it's just, I feel like you're select. It's, it, it's because system, it's, it's scheme fit with perhaps, because mm -hmm. I'm not saying select Dallas Turner, but if he's viewed as the, the better prospect, regardless, that's probably plays into what I'm thinking about. But I think it's just because Alex is your point, I think is really good. There's a lot of good players in the top 15, basically, where you should be primarily happy, particularly if you're talking about positions that you have a need at instead of a luxury, unless you mentioned cornerback. So it would be a situation where they were – one, Brock Bowers, they got two tight ends. I'm not saying I'd be against it. And I'm sitting here saying they need an edge rusher, but I would hope, in all fairness, if they, if Jared Burst was their guy, I would hope they would be able to do something similar to Donnell Wright, even if it's just a slot or two back and be able to pick up another asset. If they can't, I'm fine with them doing it, but I, I'm just going to be honest with how I feel right here. I'm not, oh, my God, you picked Burst. It's just I would want – the value of the prospect to fall in line with what majority of people feel that what that player should have been uh, drafted at. Honestly, yeah, I mean, why not just re rack? Yeah. Why not? Just like the Jets are right there at 10, move back one spot. The yeah. Jets are going to go take Fuaga or whoever they want to boost their offensive line. You get a future fourth again, maybe, who knows? And right. then you get your guy that you have circled. You know, I think a lot of people get caught up in the numbers right, of, oh, this guy shouldn't be drafted nine. He should be drafted 14. I don't think NFL teams really think that way. I think NFL teams say, this is the guy we want. We have the opportunity to go get him. We have to make sure we can't miss on him. And, they, you know, the, the worst thing that would happen is you try and get too cute and you try and, quote, unquote, maximize value. And this is where I think fantasy football has hurt, like, you know, people's thinking about this is because like, oh, well, the ADP says he's 15 or six. There's no ADP in real football because the draft only happens once, right? There's no average draft position. The draft happens one time. Um, and again, NFL big boards look different than public boards. So I think the worst thing that would happen is they get too cute because, oh, well, we think this guy should go at 15. So we're going to slide back and try and add picks. Then all of a sudden you get sniped and he's not there and you miss out on the guy you have circled. So that's why I think, you know, when you get super caught up in the numbers, oh, they, they, they drafted him at nine, but they could have had him at 12. That's where it's like the Bears probably just want to get their guy. True, yeah, I mean, but I look at what they did last year. Exactly. It, it, right, that but, was my point but, precisely. Move back one spot. It's beautiful. Right, but you got to be – you got to be – I mean, they were sure – that the Eagles were not taking Darnell right. Like with the Jets, it depends what you want, right? Like if you want a receiver and Adunze is there at nine, you're not going to trade down to 10 because the Jets are probably just going to take Adunze. Like, and I think with the edge rusher, the value conversation, I don't think there's an, like, there's not an edge rusher I would take at nine. I would not take e any of them at nine. I would only take Adunze, Alt, or Neighbors at nine. And if no one's there, I would, I would get out because I think the difference between verse Latu Latu. Dallas Turner is pretty like I don't. It's like okay, sure. What flavor do you like? Just take one. I'm with you. I think I I, I would stick it right there. That if you can't get one of those three, I'm probably yeah. moving out of, of of nine unless nobody wants to dance, and I'm then I'm right. of course yeah, right. forced to take the pick. But um, if those three players slip there and neighbors do um Dunze or all, you should just run to the draft. You, you should just get up on there it. as fast as possible. Yeah, send that card in as yeah. fast as possible. All right, guys, last but not least, uh, something oh, that's rare when it comes to the, the Bears, um, wide receiver duos. Last time, and it wasn't super long ago, fortunate enough, we had one of them on here, and that was Alshon Jeffrey. He was paired with Brandon Marshall. Um, now we're sitting here, they haven't played together yet, but we have DJ Moore being paired with Keenan Allen. Perhaps they may bring in a Roman Dunze or Malik Neighbors. Um, that's a trio, and we're talking duos, because if it was a trio, perhaps Seattle would win this discussion. But anyway... 
Let's go into duos. All right. So um, in no particular order, of course, we have Jaden Waddle, Tyreek Hill, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Brandon Cook, C.D. Lamb, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, and uh, Cooper Cup. Um, is there anybody else that I miss, guys? I, I you Oh, I'm sorry. Nice. DJ Metcalf, uh, Lockett, Calvin Ridley, DJ and, and, and uh, Hopkins, and Drake London, and Darnell Mooney. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Donna man. Mooney. <laughs> All right, so guys, Alex, let's start off with you. Sure. Give me your top three duos okay. right now, going forward into next season in NFL. Before we start, I need to uh, apologize and probably reality check myself. I was probably talking crazy when the Bears first made the Keenan Allen trade, talking like, ooh, do the Bears have a top five wide receiver duo? You know, just in the hype and the heat of the moment. But when you list that list, and when we were going over this little exercise, I was like, mm, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not when you look at the full scope of the NFL. But the Bears probably now enter the top half. The Bears probably now enter the echelon of teams. It's like, you got to have two good wide receivers. Now the Bears do have two, two excellent wide receivers. But for me, my number one probably has to be Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. I mean, really? those two guys are so good. Really? Tyreek Hill is <sighs> Tyreek Hill is something else with the ball in his hands, uh, what he can do. And then Jalen Waddle, when he's healthy, I mean, is a great that compliment. Part, that plays a part in this discussion. I'm gonna let you know moving forward. That's, <laughs> <be fair. laughs> That's no, no, no. In, fair. No, this is just we're in Madden. They're returning the injuries off. They sick. It's good. Okay. <laughs> injuries are off. <laughs> Is, I'm going with the Dolphins crew. Those two guys got to strike fear in the hearts of every single defense. I mean, how do you how do you cover those dudes? And we've seen it. I mean, like week in, week out, those guys are each putting up hundred yard games. We've we have seen it time and time again. Uh, and Raheem Mostert is also sick. It's not like they're ignoring Raheem Mostert. He's also doing great over there. Um, so that's probably my number one. My number two is probably going to be a little internal bias and I'm going to own that internal bias. And I'm going to bring that forward. <laughs> it's probably the Minnesota Vikings. One, you have Justin Jefferson, who is in my opinion, the best wide receiver in the NFL injuries are off. So he's, he's ready to rock super sick. And then my USC Trojan guy, Jordan Addison, we talked all year last year about how, man, if the Vikings can land Jordan Addison, he's going to be the perfect compliment to Justin Jefferson and the two of them are going to be crazy. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Jordan Addison was the perfect compliment to, uh, to Justin Jefferson. The two of them are really, really, really good. Ah, three is tough. It's kind of a toss up for me. Can I put two or do I have to make a decision? No, you I'll make, make a decision. You make a deci make a decision. I'll make a decision, but I'm going Come to talk on. you through my thinking. Put your name on it. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking AJ Brown and Devonta Smith because mm -hmm. AJ Brown again is just like that dominant wide receiver one. And then Devonta Smith is such an excellent complimentary piece who, when he needs to, can be the guy and will rise to the occasion. We've seen that. However, I'm gonna go out west to Debo Samuel and Brennan Ayuk, just because I think Debo Samuel is such a unique wide receiver, the things you can do with him, the Kyle Shanahan chess piece aspect of what Debo Samuel brings to the table to me just moves that needle. Like I am including Kyle Shanahan in my assessment of that wide receiver room. They do some fun, awesome things. Debo Samuel is sick. Brandon Ayuk is also probably underrated. Um, so I'm going to go with them three but i'm i'm sure you know like that feels also incredibly disrespectful to jamar chase and t higgins like as soon as i say it i'm like oh, how yeah, are they totally not invited i know totally yeah I thank know. you we appreciate yeah. it we appreciate it's it a hard yeah. Yeah. Right. it's a hard yeah. exercise yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gosh yeah. go ahead let's get your your top three uh yeah we'll make this quick uh, i'm gonna go with one jamar chase and t higgins <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah because uh easily yeah jamar, jamar chase is incredible and uh, T Higgins, uh, I mean, perfect compliment. Um, so that's, that's easy for me too. I'm going to go with AJ Brown and Devonta Smith. Um, I think Devonta Smith, I, I feel, I just feel like a breakout's coming. Like he's been, he's been pretty good, but I feel like he's got another level to go to. 
Uh, so I'll, I'll go there. And then uh, the Dolphins aren't on my board. I'm I'm done with the Dolphins. You're done uh, with the it's Dolphins. Not on, it's not on my board. I didn't. They're not even draftable to me. It's, that's undraftable. <laughs> I got Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle plays four games. Tyreek Hill is injuries are good. off. You ah, told me injuries said. are off. <laughs> that was your injury. Your injuries are off. He was joking. Yeah. I didn't, you didn't catch that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and and three, I would go with the Vikings just because I think Justin Jefferson is obviously the best receiver in football, um, and Addison's gonna gonna continue to get better. But as long as Sam Darnold can uh, can put it in J, in JJ's zip code, uh, they'll still rock. So yeah, we'll go we'll go Bengals, Eagles, Vikings. Uh, T Higgins and Jamar Chase are clearly number one in my yeah. book. Um, I would put Jaden Wall Jaden Wall and Tyreek Hill here. But it's really just because of Tyreek Hill. And I'm going to be honest. I mean, I don't feel the same. That's why I didn't, that's why I didn't say the Cowboys. It's just CD. Yeah, right. Get that out of here. Uh, I'll say this, though. Uh, Justin Jefferson has to regain best wide receiver in the league because that does reside in Miami right now, in my opinion. Um, and the mm. fact that – for me, for me. Because I, I think that – who, who was better last, case. Who was better last year? Who was better last year, Josh? Is I'm just talking. Year, like, I'm going last. I'm saying like the year before was Justin. Je I'm, just, I'm going off of because that's how good. So it's the like, receivers so it's, like a, it's like it's like a it's like a belt. It's like a title belt. You yeah, it's, it is. Okay, okay. It is like that. We're at, we're in an era right. where that's a lot of guys that can pop and be the number right. one wide receiver for a season. Because yeah. I mean, right. so that's what I'm saying. So last year, because we were saying it was Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill was. I'm I'm, I'm going from Tyreek Hill. Let's just go from his time in Miami. We were two years ago. It was Justin Jefferson, and we was like, "Whoa, Tyreek Hill is doing this with with with, with Tua, right?" And we were like, "Well, we got to put some more respect because he was doing it with Mahomes. He's doing it with Tua, and we still were out on Tua. So with Tyreek Hill last year being healthy and Justin Jefferson not, it goes to him. I have to see Justin Jefferson come back and show that he can be as healthy as he was prior to that injury, and that that injury is significant and is going to be one of those things that makes him into a Jaden Waddle and some of those players right. that we mentioned before." Um, I would I like DJ Metcalf and Lucky, even though we've talked about some of the limitations in the past on here with DJ Metcalf. I really like Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, to be honest with you. That was my that was um, my four. That was my four. Yeah, I really, really wish good. I really wish I could put Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in this, but Chris Godwin really has to make Chris Godwin. Godwin. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's sad when you think about what he gave up to win and stay there. And I know people he got paid, yeah, but it is messed up. It's like he really didn't get to enjoy it. I'll say this, I, I, Alex. I think I'm happy that you did bring it back when we're talking about what the Bears had. I still think the Bears tandem may have a lot of really good synergy, depending on what Shane Waldron could come up with and how well Caleb Williams performs at a quarterback. Because when you're talking, I think last year we, I don't know if anybody thought that coming over with the Bears and not having another option. Well, you had at least you had Cole Komet, but not having another option at wide receiver that DJ Moore would have the best season that he's ever had. You know, like, I, again, he, I think we kind of forget he had the best season, and he's probably he, – he played with better weapons opposite of him down in Carolina, even if you're talking about uh, Samuel, or, you know, just some of the guys that he had down there compared to being in here. But I'll say my third – my third would probably be Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. Um, it, they would be higher if Justin Jefferson wasn't hurt. I won't sit here and go homer. Throw the Bears in there, but I will say this: I think the Bears may be in my top six or seven, if I because injuries do play a factor in this. Um, the only thing that benefits everyone else is that the Bears wide receivers have not played together, um, and they haven't played with their quarterback. Um, and I found that interesting when, when you're talking about Sam Darnold and with Minnesota, like yeah. And I know, look, and I'm not the biggest Kirk Cousins person, but he's a lot more accomplished than Sam Darnold. And we'll find out when uh, we have Justin Jefferson and he doesn't have a good thrower to get him the ball, maybe how upset he may end up uh, being during the season. So that that's all of our top three wide receiver tandems. Last question, just real quick. Where, if you in, pop in your head, where does the Bears tandem rank right now? Alex, you kind of gave yours. You said in the top half. So are you saying they're in the top 15 is what you're well, saying? Well, let's see. Let's, let's try and go through it like kind of quickly. And see if we can form some kind of consensus. So we all have the Bengals, the Eagles. Josh, are, are the Dolphins ahead of, of the Bears? I know you were off on the Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Tyreek Hill is better than DJ Moore and Keenan combined. Okay. So that, the Vikings, four. Yep. Rams with Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, five. Niners. Uh, the Niners, six. So right now we're talking seven. Do we the, think? I think, I, think I think seven is fair. 
You think seven is fair? Do we think, think DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley over? No, okay, same. Seen. That's where yeah. I'm at. I think. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. Seven's for me. I think, I think there's yeah, seven. I think seven's seven's good because I think everything after that is like a a one and then like an if B right. It's like CD and Brandon Cooks. Right. Okay. Uh, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I'm just again. I'm just trying to. They be, could look. I, from, I could say this if you oh, put them in seven. We forgot. I got one more that we forgot. I got one more that we forgot. Stefan Diggs and Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Whether it's Nico Collins or Tank Dell, how do you feel about that? No, it's it's duo? either it's either Tank Dell or Stefan Diggs. Nico's a real one. <laughs> I gotta I gotta see I gotta see it from Diggs, man. Diggs was Diggs was not good last year. And that might he be was a not good at the thing, but, second half of last year. Right. That might be a Joe Brady thing, but it might also be uh he's 30 and we're going like this. So I gotta see it. I'm with you. So for me, I, I got to see how that's – also, there could be regression from right. all those players on that team, all, all right? Yeah. <laughs> all of them. There could be regression, right? Now the league knows what they're doing, so there could yeah. be regression. So from, I, I think around seven, you could knock the Bears down too. You could keep them – I think that's kind of seven. where that tandem is because I think the fit – you got a guy that can do everything as far as stretch the field. Then you got a guy that can do everything under. I mean, and a savant at under. So I think that's where it's it's kind of, and this is not the same, but and it, they're not the same. It's not an apples to orange, uh, apples to apples comparison. But when you look at Jamar Chase and T Higgins, where you have both of them can go over the top, but you have that huge receiver in Higgins. Then you have the smaller, but not a small receiver in Jamar Chase that can go over the top plate, do everything under. Also, I think it's it's just a nice, nice combo, and I think perhaps we'll see the Bears may have one of the better combos that that really benefit one another. Where All do right. we slot in? Uh, where do you slot in Travis Kelsey and Hollywood Brown? <laughs> That's Travis a Kelsey is not Actually, part I mean, of this. But you know what? We're not, a, we can't, we're not doing tight ends. We're not doing tight ends. We, we're not doing tight ends. Because then it, they could, that could have messed up a lot. Because if we did trios, man, it's some it's some teams out here. Then we, it's, I guess we have to revisit if the Bears do draft one of the receivers at number nine. And then we'll come back here and we'll do our top three trios within the upcoming NFL season. All right. For Josh Rock, Alex Shabiro, Tony Gill, Claire Flippoli, we always appreciate you all taking a little bit of time. Please like and subscribe and please be safe. We look forward to make sure you check out Wednesday's episode at 5.30 p.m. on NBC Sports Chicago. Congrats, you finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.